In Nairobi, we have Ken Geshinga, who is the chief economist of Mentoria Economics in Kenya. In Hong Kong, we invited Yoshikazu Kato, an adjunct associate professor of the Asia Global Institute of the University of Hong Kong. He is, of course, originally coming from Japan. Last but not least, in our Beijing studio, He Weiwen, senior fellow of the Center for China and Globalization. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. One of the major themes of the Import Expo in Shanghai, which opens today, is about innovation and the future, building it together. So, uh, Mr. Kato, Japan is a country of innovation for quite some time. How do you see the new forces of innovation in Asia? How will there be opportunities for business to work together, Mr. Kato? Now, Japanese uh, business sites and the government, they are targeting Chinese, you know, very increasingly, you know, you know a growing market. So this is a very good opportunity for Japanese business side to sell our own products and, and make a point of the Chinese market and mm -hmm. of course communicating with the international community in Shanghai. It's a very important chance. It's interesting you talk about that way. Actually two tracks. One is the Chinese market. The other is this platform will serve as a gather together for all to have a possibility together. Mr. He, how do you see that? Oh yes, I think uh, innovation, of course, is the centerpiece of the second uh, import expo. Uh, I think in innovation should cover two aspects. Yeah. First, industry innovation. Second, trade innovation. Mm. Without a strong, powerful, advanced, cutting-edge industry, you cannot say any trade industry innovation. So in this side uh, case, we should know that the, the mega trend of the world fourth industrial revolution uh, is uh, taking shape in the world, and Especially in this, we should not forget that for those countries, especially African or Asian countries, who are still at the early stage of industrialization, mm -hmm. can also take advantage of development of the latest artificial intelligence, 5Gs, or uh, so on and so forth, digital mm -hmm. economy. Uh, they can take uh, have a leapfrog strategy to catch up. Of course, there's a lot of ideas are flying around, but not only that, but applications as well. Mr. Kashinga, a leapfrogging certainly for the developing country. There is a great advantage right now. Do you think Africa, African countries such as that of yours, will be able to catch the train, even though there are certain challenges still on the continent? Definitely, it plays out in a different way than from Asia. I'll remind you that most of the exports to China are agricultural produce, for example. So if you look at the avocado sector, for example, things such as coolers will be needed, transport costs will be needed. So it's very different from, for example, how Hyundai uh, in South Korea exports to China. So we are looking at more innovation in the agricultural sector. How do we make it cheaper to produce these agricultural products mm -hmm. so that it's cheaper and faster to transport them to Asia? Mm. Through e-commerce and also digital trade as well. Mr. He, last time, last year, uh, 3,700 companies from 176 countries and regions participating in the expo. Wow, the number. This year, also even more impressive. There, of course, there's a very different interpretation as what innovation is. To China, what exactly is it? I think the second ex import expo should serve as a tremendous case, showcase of all the latest technology and mm. products and with great diversification from different parts of the world. Mr. Kato, how do you see this competition and cooperation of innovation, particularly under a very different geopolitical map, I'm afraid to say? There are 380 uh, Japanese companies already registered to attend this, you know, the second uh, CIE. So you know, this is a very huge number. And their, their focus is very clear. One is, you know, food, like, you know, agriculture and fishery products. And yeah. another one is, you know, Medicare and healthcare, this, this kind of very important, you know, area for tackling aging society in this region. So uh, we should have some focus and to tackle this very important and very energetic, you know, area, you know, and it's important con contribution for the world economy. Mm -hmm. So Japan and China now, we can do something for pushing forward this the regional cooperation. Japan, you now we are very, very much making a point of relation with China, and we are, we have been allies of the United States. Uh, but now this is a kind of, you know, uh, f uh, focusing on import. So anyway, this is uh, better than nothing.
Mm. Mr. He, of course, uh, you think about the opening up of China's uh, process uh, from the early 1980s. Uh, Japan was one of the active players, in fact, uh, in those years and throughout. Now, it's a very different development stage of China. So next year, we're also likely to see more high-level interaction between Japan and China. So how do you see this innovation being a key word between the two countries? Can they be and can they be reflected at the Expo? Oh, certainly. Uh, at the very start of China's, the early days of China's opening up, I had a chance to visit in Japan, Jetro, in 1983. I learned quite a lot from the, how the trade system and also Japanese economy operated. Mm. And we learned quite a lot. And we have been benefited quite greatly from Japanese advanced technology experiences and management. And we'll continue to do so, although we have a larger economy size mm. than Japan. Still, in many fields, we should learn from the Japanese technology experiences and so on. Uh, Mr. Gushinga, how do you see the innovation drive going on in African countries as well? Your home country, for example. And how is that related to some of the biggest trends that we have seen in the world? Whether it is 5G, or it is quantum computing, or it is a blockchain, AI. I know you are at a very de development stage for most of the African countries, but uh, as many believe this is also the opportunity for Africa. It is, it is. Um, in fact, Nairobi is be emerging as one of the major innovation hubs in Africa. This is the home of M-Pesa, which is the, one of the world's largest mobile money applications. So definitely, things around blockchain, artificial intelligence, fintech, these are the things that are occupying young minds who have traveled across the world with amazing education and these are the things that now are requiring uh, some Chinese input and we have seen China coming up to set up innovation hubs here in Nairobi. If mobile money can work very well mm -hmm. as it is in Kenya, why shouldn't it work in a bigger market like in China? Mm. Uh, Mr. Hu, you want to respond to that? Yes. I think Africa should be the hope of the world for the 21st century because it's a young, it's a great, many young people and still growing fast the population mm -hmm. and they are growing very fast because many of the fastest growing economies in the world are in Africa. Uh, in this uh, aspect, China has and will continue to cooperate with Africa in various fields of industry, mm -hmm. agriculture and the services. We hope that Africa will develop and uh, the second uh, import expo will also provide a platform co for cooperation between China and Africa. Mm. You know, we've been hearing one wave after mm. another about the innovation in the world. Of course, the fourth industrial revolution also taking place as we speak. But whether we are going to catch the train and what is the key to that train? What is the ticket to that train? That probably is the question in everybody's mind. Well, I think what's behind the, the growth in trade essentially is uh, the world is becoming a more multidimensional environment. Uh, the huge bilateral relationships of the past are changing and countries are looking for new markets. So for me, from my perspective, I think innovation is introducing new producers into the markets mm -hmm. and giving them the opportunity to meet new consumers. Very interesting point there. Mr. Kato? It, it could create uh, a huge space uh, to create a better future in the world, in this region. Mr. He? Yes, I think uh, uh, innovation is a big word. It has it been is a big uh, word. said for many years in the world, in different parts of the world. However, innovation should adapt to different situations of different countries. And each country should create their own experience in how to innovate, mm. adapting to their own conditions. So they will create a history. By working together by the common efforts of different countries with the different characteristics, we will create a new history of innovation for the world. Mm. There are a lot of big ambitions I have found out through your answers, gentlemen. But for now, we want to thank you for your insights on the import expo, certainly, and also the common aspirations that we could have about innovation. Thank you so much for joining us from Africa, from Asia, and also from China. Kanga Shinga, Yoshikatsu Kato, and He Wen. Really appreciate it. Thank you.